you've ever been through a hurricane in South Florida, you've likely seen a towering pine tree come tumbling down in the high winds. That tree was most likely an Australian pine. There are actually a few different species of Australian pine in South Florida, and all of them have a similar impact on the local ecosystem. The trees were brought to Florida in the late 1800s to serve as windbreaks. They were planted along beaches and near farmland in order to serve as a protective barrier. In more recent times, they were planted on golf courses to serve a similar purpose. But Australian pine wasn't meant to be here, and its shallow root system means it's not sturdy enough to withstand the high winds that our tropical storms can cause. The shallow roots also accelerate erosion on beaches and shorelines, and the Australian pine has other impacts too. You'll also notice that you don't tend to find much vegetation beneath them, not only just because of the, the, sh the, the shading out of the natural vegetation, but also because they produce chemicals called allelopathic agents into the soil that suppress the growth of other plants nearby. This effect allows the Australian pine to eliminate its competition, making it easier to take over in parks, along roadsides, and in natural areas. The Australian pine also produces huge numbers of seeds, which can spread in a variety of ways. Those, those cones um, actually can float as well, and so that only facilitates their spread. So if you have Australian pine planted along a canal or along the coastline, those seeds can easily spread up and down the coastline or down canals to other areas. Removal is generally done by mechanical means, but can prove controversial. Most people see the pine purely as an attractive tree that provides great shade, so they resist efforts to remove the trees. Herbicides can also be used to control the growth of the Australian pine, but present their own problems with chemical runoff, especially near water. 